Deep underground in an undisclosed location, this is Tread Comics Presents the 1943 Batman Serial. The Batman 1943 black and white 15 chapter theatrical serial from Columbia Pictures starred Lewis Wilson as Batman and Douglas Croft as his sidekick Robin. The serial is based on the DC comic character Batman who first appeared in Detective Comics issue number 27 in May of 1939. The villain is an original character named Dr. Daka, a secret agent of the Japanese Imperial Government, played by J. Carol Nash. Rounding out the cast are Shirley Patterson as Linda Page, Bruce Wayne's love interest, and William Austin as Alfred, the Wayne Manor butler. The serial storyline involves the Batman, a secret U.S. government agent, attempting to defeat the sabotage schemes of Japanese agent Daka Daka, operating in Gotham City at the height of World War II. Serving Daka are his traitorous American henchmen. Batman is notable for being the first appearance on film of Batman and for debuting serial story details that quickly became permanent parts of the Batman comics mythos. The Batcave and its secret entrance through a grandfather clock inside Wayne Manor. The serial also changed the course of how Alfred Pennyworth's physical appearance was depicted in Batman stories. At the time Batman was released in theaters, Alfred was a portly gentleman in the comics. Subsequently, issues suddenly portrayed Alfred as a trim and sporting a thin mustache following actor William Austin's portrayal of the character. The serial was a commercial success and in 1949, four years after World War II, spawned another Columbia chapter serial entitled Batman and Robin. The entire first Batman serial was re-released theatrically in 1965 as an evening with Batman and Robin and proved very popular. Some theaters showed the chapters as Saturday matinees. Its success inspired the live action comedy lampoon series Batman from 1966 starring Adam West and Burt Ward. The plot sees the Batman, Bruce Wayne played by Lewis Wilson and his ward Robin Dick Grayson, played by Douglas Croft, secret government agents following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, becoming aware of a Japanese sabotage ring operating in Gotham City. Bruce's girlfriend, Linda Page, played by Shirley Patterson, asks for his help in finding her uncle, Martin Warren, played by Gus Glassmere, who was abducted by the ring after he was released from prison. Dr. Tito Daka, the Japanese leader of the ring, plans to steal the city's radium supply to power his invention, a handheld ray gun that can dissolve anything hit by its powerful beam. He forces from Warren the location of the vault where the radium is stored. Daka sends his American henchmen along with a zombie that he controls via microphone and an electronic brain implant to steal the precious metal. Batman discovers the plot and eventually defeats the gang after a terrific battle. In his secret Batcave, the Batman interrogates one of Daka's henchmen who reveals that the radium was to have been taken away to the House of the Open Door located in the mostly deserted Little Tokyo section of Gotham City. Batman and Robin infiltrate the gang's lair hidden inside a still open business. A funhouse ride. There they find Linda bound and gagged and unconscious. After she is rescued by the dynamic duo, Dr. Daka transforms her Uncle Warren into a zombie and plots the derailment of a heavy laden supply train. Once again, Dr. Daka's sabotage efforts are stopped by Batman and Robin. Traps and counter-traps foul 
with breathtaking rapidity in the chapters that follow, as the dynamic duo continued to thwart the plans of the Japanese agent and his henchmen. When Dr. Daka attempts to steal America's victory plans, the Batman and Robin finally prevail. They oversee the capture of Daka's men and finally the destruction of the Japanese agent as he tries to escape but falls to his death through his own trap door into a pit of hungry crocodiles. The Batman 1943 serial was made at the height of World War II and like numerous works of popular American fiction at the time, contains anti-Axis power sentiments in this case, anti-Japanese ethnic slurs and comments. Like any other contemporary serials of its time, the Batman also suffered from a low budget. No attempt was made to create the Batmobiles, so a black 1939 Cadillac series 61 convertible was used chauffeured by Alfred when Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson were either in their civilian or alter ego identities. It is driven top up when it is in the Batmobile and top down when it is in Bruce Wayne's car. While many serials made changes as part of their adaptation to the extent that they were often improved upon out of recognition, Batman fared better than most and changes were minor. In this serial, special utility belts were worn but never used. The villain was not taken from the comic stories, and there was no Batmobile per se, and Batman was a secret agent of the government instead of an independent crime-fighting vigilante. This last change was due to the time period's film censors, who would not allow the hero to be seen taking the law into his own hands. Oh no! in time to give the enemy some real opposition.
That finishes the man. Finishes the Batman, too. Come on, let's get out of here. Is Linda all right? Yes, just fainted. See if any of the others are still alive. to find you're still alive, sir. Never mind that. See if you can find Colton. Yes, sir. Here, help me with him. Why, he's one of those crooks. Just the same, we can't leave him here to die. Well, what about the others? Under that, not a chance. What are you going to do with me? You'll find out soon enough. Let's take another look at our passenger in the trailer, and then we'll get back to Linda. Looks like he's in for an uncomfortable ride, but it serves him right. Mr. Bruce, this. Bruce! I thought you were caught in an explosion. Explosion? What explosion? Well, the explosion at the cave. Well, that explains it. Well, we never got to the cave. It was so hot out, we laid down by the roadside and took a nap. Asleep. Just when I needed you both so much. If it hadn't have been for the Batman, I'd be dead in the cave. Just like poor Ken. Ken dead? What happened? Oh, I don't want to even talk about it. Let's get out of this horrible place. Am I to understand the explosion has made it impossible to work the mine? Yes, it would take us months to clear away the debris. Another failure to carry out my orders. I must warn you that I shall be compelled to use very drastic measures unless you... Well, we accomplished one thing. We eliminated the Batman once and for all. Are you positive of that? Sure. He was buried in the cave along with Colton and the rest of them. How many of our men were lost? Just two, Marshall and Raines. Well, not so bad. A small price for his destruction. Now we will have to find new men to take the place of our late lamented members. Wallace, attend to that right away. I'll do my best. You better stay undercover for the present. The police have a warrant out for your arrest. That's no surprise to me. I'll hide out at Bernie's place for a while. But be sure you are not followed. We cannot afford to have the police suspect that place and keep men watching it. That will be all, gentlemen. My little friends don't frighten you as much as they did some of your predecessors. You're trying to scare information out of me. You're just wasting your time. I'd hate to use drastic measures. Your threats don't frighten me. Do whatever you're going to do and get it over with. A few hours alone with our vampire friends may cause you to change your mind. Should we leave him tied up? Yes, I think we'd better. <laughs> He isn't tied very well, so it won't take him long to get loose. Then we'll get some information. but I can't get out. I'll leave the phone off the hook, have the call traced, and contact the boys and tell them to get over here as fast as possible. Okay, Marshal.
Hello? Hello, is this Boston Bakery on Powell Street? No, you got the wrong number. This is the Sphinx Club on River Street. Work like a charm. It's the number of the Sphinx Club on River Street. Sphinx Club? Yes, I only hope it's the headquarters of that gang we're after. Are we going down there and try and find out? Most assuredly. Oh, Dort. How's it look? Okay. Come on, we'll pick up Alfred. Hello. Oh. 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 <laughs> You're quite shocking, sir. Doesn't look anything like Bruce Wayne, does he? Oh, that's good. Now all I need is a name for myself. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, how about uh, Reginald Van Spike? Uh, that's a very smart name, sir. For a mobster? I'm afraid not, Alfred. Chuck White. Good enough. You boys may call me Chuck. Sir. Yes. See where that is, Alfred. Dick, get the car. It's Miss Page at the door, sir. I tell her I'm not at home, but sure in here. See if she recognizes Chuck White. Oh, uh, Miss Page, uh, this is a Mr. Uh, White. He's also waiting for Mr. Bruce. How do you do? Hello. You a friend of Bruce? Well, well yes. But if you're going to wait for him, why don't you sit down? I'll keep you company. I'll tell you about some of my fights. Oh, well, thank you very much, but I'm afraid I can't wait. Alfred, would you tell Mr. Wayne that I dropped by, but I'll call him in the morning? Very good, miss. Goodbye. Goodbye. My word, she seemed a bit miffed, sir. <laughs> she doesn't like some of my friends. <laughs> you certainly fooled her, sir. <laughs> well, if she didn't recognize me, I'm sure none of the boys down at the Sphinx Club will. Let's go. There's the club. Sure doesn't look any too good. Pull around the corner, Alfred. You remember here, bud? No, I'm from out of town. A guy named Marshall told me to get in touch with him here. Well, I'll see if he's in. Wait here a minute. There's a mug out here. Wants to see Marshall. If he does, he'll have to dig him up himself. Shall I tell him what happened to Marshall, or just send him on his way? Wait a minute. I'll take a look at him. Which one is he? That's him over there with the slot machine. Bring him in here. I'll talk to him. Break it up, boys. I'm have to shake this guy down. Hey, you. Come here a minute. Follow me. I'm looking for Marshall. You a friend of his? Yeah. I'm Chuck White. He told me to contact him. He said he could line me up for something big. Well, sit down, Chuck. Marshall's going to a place where he can't identify anyone. He's dead. Well, that's too bad. How'd he get it? He was killed in a mine explosion. Have you any identification or proof that you were his pal? Look, I just come here to meet Marshall. I didn't expect no third degree. Skip the whole thing. Now, wait a minute, Chuck. All I want is a little proof that you're a right guy. So if you're not a detective or a stool pigeon, you won't mind if we search you just to satisfy our curiosity. Look, you mugs. Nobody's searching me till I find out what this is all about. I haven't ever little dough on me, and I ain't taking no chances. If any of you guys get any ideas, he's gonna frisk me. He better change his mind. Now, if you boys want to take me as I am, all right. If not, you better get away from there, mister, because I'm gone. All right, boys, search him. The Batman! 
Ryan's outside. Let's get him. learns of a new shipment of radium for the disintegrator gun which is being sent by air messenger. And there's Preston lighting the flare, signaling the messenger to drop the precious radium. Will Robin be able to thwart the plans of the Jap spies? Don't fail to see Flying Spies, Chapter 10 of Batman at this theater next week.